A few weeks ago, we were shown an amazing tech demo for Unreal Engine 5 that showed off ridiculous numbers of polygons, uh, uh, triangles, and shading, and all sorts of amazing advances in graphics tech that will be possible with the newest PC video cards and ninth generation of consoles. During this demo, we were reminded that this was just a tech demo and not from any sort of game that was in progress. Now, this isn't unusual. Quite often, tech demos are just there to show off the capabilities of an engine or console, or maybe demonstrate the programming prowess of the developers. Most of the time, this just remains speculative, but there have been a few tech demos that either directly inspired games, turned into full games, or games that felt like they were designed to be tech demos themselves. One of the oldest sort of tech demo is the demo scene. Homebrew hackers that squeeze everything they can out of whatever system they got their hands on. A complete history here would take forever, but a few demos, that's with a capital D, from the scene, with a capital S, group named Plastic, released early in the PS3's life. The most impressive one was Linger in Shadows, showing some amazing real-time graphics on the cell processor. Later on, they'd make full game experiences like Datura and Bound, which sort of felt like tech displays themselves. The PS3 was also the home to a tech demo featuring a bunch of rubber ducks in a bathtub. Phil Harrison showed off this whimsical display on stage at E3 2005 to show off the sort of interactive physics the PS3 would be able to handle. Two years later, Super Rub-A-Dub popped up on the PlayStation Network, a simple puzzle game that reintroduced us to the cute little tub duckies. When the PS4 came around, we were introduced to Playrooms, little minigame collections that were designed to introduce you to the features of the PS4, DualShock 4, the camera, or the PSVR. One of the better minigames out of the bunch was Robot Rescue, a sort of 3D platformer that had some serious Mario 64 vibes. It was a ton of fun, and every time I played I wished for more. Two years later, I got that wish with the release of the award-winning Astrobot Rescue Mission. Seriously, if you have PSVR and haven't played this yet, go grab it now. Speaking of Mario, there is a good example on the GameCube of a tech demo inspiring other games. The Mario 128 demo was shown at Space World 2000 to show off some of the capabilities of Nintendo's 6th generation entry. Now, fortunately, this horrific display of mass self-murder didn't become a game itself, but the wandering random behaviors of the individual Marios did inspire the development of the Pikmin games, informing the motion of the eponymous plant-based helpers. Another tech demo that inspired the production of a full game later on was a 2012 release by Quantic Dream called Kara. 
It was actually released to show off what the Heavy Rain studio had learned of the last few years of experimentation with the PlayStation 3, and at the time, David Cage had said that it wasn't connected to a game in development. Well, it apparently got stuck in his head, though, and six years later, Detroit Become Human was released, which included a familiar face. My name is Kara. I am one of them. This is our story. One of the games shown off for the PS5 at the official reveal on June 11th was Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. The series has a track record for being console tech demos wrapped into an amazingly fun third-person adventure. From particle and water effects on the PS2 that were so complex they could only be hidden away in a museum area, to the rift jumping showing off the PS5's raw data handling capabilities. My favorite studio in this regard, though, is Traveler's Tales. These madmen managed 3D effects with no special hardware on the Genesis, higher color palettes than what it should have been capable of handling, fluid 30 frames per second full screen graphics, and even squeezing pre rendered FMV onto a Genesis cartridge. If you want to know more about these insane tricks way back in the 90s, I highly recommend hitting up John Burton's YouTube channel Game Hut where he goes into full detail on the programming tricks possible with Sega's consoles. I've only scratched the surface here, but I'd love to hear from you on this. Tell me about your favorite tech insanity, whether from the demo scene, full games, or one-shots, in the comments below, or on Twitter at Tesseract Unfold. Meanwhile, like, subscribe, spread the word, and I'll catch you again next week.